after eight o'clock. So how do you put a nation's history on a stage? Yeah, it sounds like an impossible task, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, there's only one person who could do it and do it right. He joins us now in studio. Go well, my son. Your destiny awaits. Godspeed, Osama. Oh, it's the same. We will fight to improve the world we wish to join. I am grateful to the Avengers. Joburg Theatre, in partnership with John Ghani, presents Kunene and the King. Visit joburgtheatre.com. Another big interview on 947 Breakfast with Tunda. He joins us now, prolific, legendary actor, director, author, playwright. Am I forgetting anything? Is there something I missed on in the title? Elder. Uh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. John Ghani is in the building. <laughs> Congratulations on yet another incredible uh, play. Uh, does there ever come a time where you feel like, is there more I can do? Uh, have I, you know, is there more ideas I could possibly come up with? How do I make society reflect even more? It's most frightening when you've done a play and it was very successful. Yeah. And then you're running the play because, uh, see, I create work for myself. Yes. I always write myself in the play. <laughs> <laughs> the best, Love to hear the it. best way to do it. Eh? So when the play is over and then you think, yeah. I'll never be able to do this again. Yes. I'll never be able. Yes. It, the thing is, it's just to wait until the idea comes. Mm. And it starts by a little thought. Yeah. You thought, okay, we're going, it's 2018, 2019. It's 25 years of South Africa's democracy. Yes. And then you leave it like that. Mm. And then an idea comes, what am I celebrating? Mm. And then you, you, you think about that, and is, then you think what, is other, what other people are celebrating. Mm. And then it begins to form, and you think, what's the narrative? How would I tell the story of what am I celebrating? What's 25 years meant to me? In that narrative, there suddenly is a structure. Little faces begin to come into your mind, the people, the characters you will use. Mm. And they speak in like little tickoloshes yes. speaking to you, <laughs> demanding attention. <laughs> and then you say, no, no, I'm doing this now. Yeah. I'll deal with you later. Yeah. And suddenly you can't sleep. And then the biggest fright is the blank page. How do you start? Yes. You never start with the title because mm. it limits. Okay. Because now you're committed to, 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 to be loyal to what you said the title of the yes. play is. Right. You start just with the story. Once upon a time, mm. it goes, there was this guy who is white, very great South African actor, classical. He's sick. He's going to do a play in Cape Town. It's called King Lear. Yeah. So, but the problem is he's got a terminal disease. Mm. He doesn't know how long he's going to live. And as an actor, it's the ultimate role yeah. to play King Lear. Yes. It can destroy your career at the end of it because you have to be over 60 to do King Lear. Yeah. And if you miss it, everybody will talk about how you messed up this great role. Mm. And therefore, he needs someone to look after him because he's sick. So he phones mm -hmm. the nursing agency. Send me someone to look after me. Yes. And I want to be looked after in my house I can afford. Oh, Sister Kuhn from the nursing agency is coming. Doorbell rings. And it's I, not. I walk in. He yes. thinks I'm pizza delivery boy. <laughs> <laughs> he says, Mr. Delivery, you are early. Yeah. I said, excuse me, I'm the nurse mm. sent by the agency to look after you. Yes. He said, no, 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 no. Sister Kun is coming. I said, no, you didn't listen. Sister Kunene. Right. And born is the story Kunene <laughs> and, and the, the king. king. That's exactly Kunene and the king. And the king is the king Lee. God Because Kunene is studied, you know, every child in this country studied the Shakespeare ones from whatever level you are, up yes. to metric, or some even up to the university. So we are familiar with Shakespeare. Mm. But Kunene has an African take. He questions Shakespeare. He doesn't think he's the greatest writer on earth. There's, there's Ch Chinui Achebe, there's Zeke Sumda, there's yes. Adolf Fuga, there is uh, so Iskiam Patele. But he knows it's a very interesting one. Mm. So the clash in culture starts immediately. Okay. And of course, finding each other after beginning in the sense of, what are you doing in my house? You're black. Yes. Yeah. And therefore you look after me. Oh, by the way, where am I going to sleep? Yes. <laughs> so this is it's basically a humorous reflection of polarized views 
of South African post-apartheid South Africa. Absolutely. It's, you, you, I asked a friend who's black. Yes. What are you celebrating next year, 2019? Well, he had about 70% of things he's happy with. That 30% was very bad because when we do something bad in this country, we do it very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very good at messing it up. <laughs> and then I asked a white friend who's an actor, he's now in Australia, and I said, what would you celebrate next year? Mm. Oh, my Lord, I had a grocery list of like, a failed state. Yes. Mm. Nothing works. Nothing, nothing, no potholes, this and that, and the corruption and mm. the violence. I'm leaving this country. You think they live in the same country, Correct. but they behave like they come from two, two planets. Worlds. I mean, what I found interesting is both characters had dreams and ambitions uh, deferred for whatever reasons. I think for Gunene, it's his past with his father and his uh, him dealing with apartheid South Africa. And in this case, with the king, it would be the actual character and his terminal disease. Exactly. The, this fascinating thing, when I was writing the play, my younger brother, Willie from Port Elizabeth, Reverend Kani, who I refer to, whenever I write a play, did I say anything blasphemous? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. He said, what are you doing now? I said, no, I'm going to display about this guy. I mean, he's dying of liver cancer, but he has to play this role. Yes. And then I come back from uh, 2019. Now, I've done the play at Stratford, the home of Shakespeare. Mm. My Lord, Tembegil. People there know Shakespeare breathing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And they sit there and they say, show me mm. right on and then i come back from a very successful season at stratford we're about to transfer to the west end so you transfer of course if you very 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 successful and there's a commercial possibility yeah. for the producers so i tell my brother what the play is about he says to me it's funny i've just been diagnosed of liver cancer oh, yeah. stage wow. four and then he he passed away he in passed 2019. away on the 31st of december 2019. Sure. We finished the West End run. We did not finish it, of course. Boris Johnson comes with his uncombed <laughs> hair and <laughs> declare all cultural venues closed because of COVID-19. COVID, yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm now in South Africa. I'm doing two movies at the same time. Uh, one is in Paris, uh, the Hawaii. That one is in L.A. and London. So then I get an email from my co-actor, Sir Anthony Shea. John, life imitates art. Art, indeed. Or art imitates it's life. life. I'm dying of liver cancer, sure. stage four. Sure. Last, uh, four months later, he passed on. Yeah. And fortunately, I thought about with the director, Janice Honeyman, Richard, Michael Richard. Mm. And I've always wanted to work with this dude. I've seen his work from afar. There are very few people you think, I really want to work yes. with this dude. And I called, he said, yes. So we now, it's like, Two people yeah. split half. Yeah. Mm. So the stars just aligned. Yes, everything. Yeah. And, and he's South African. He's not playing the role. Mm. Mm. He's in it. And every evening, I mean, I'm sitting there I'm doing my role and, and I'm watching. And this guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> We're hanging out with the incredible Dr. John Kani. We are uh, streaming this on our Facebook page, yes. and over to 947. Uh, so much more to find out. I'd love to know whether it was a journey of you wanting when you found out about your brother's passing. Did that help drive you in the play, or was there a sense of sadness? We'll get into that uh, on the other side of us. So marking 25 years since the country's first post-apartheid democratic elections, Gunene and the King becomes an exploration of race, class, politics, theatre, and potentially unifying power of Shakespeare. Why was Shakespeare the vehicle you chose to use? Because I wanted... The first idea was that I was an... Um, an actor living in Orlando and hustling, you yes. know. And I look after this guy who's about to play this great role. I didn't know what the role was. And suddenly the idea came about King Lear. Because mm. that's what I want to do one day okay. when I have time. So I thought that would be fantastic. The idea was that I then, when he dies, would complete that powerful Lear speech in the wind. Mm. And knowing me, I'm going to do the greatest performance of King Lear, but you all know that I'll never get the part. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my favorite things about, I mean, I haven't seen the play, but just reading up about it is the confrontation of a post-apartheid South Africa and how we are sort of going about as if it did not happen. 
Uh, and I think this play forces you to look in the mirror. And I think in one of the quotes you wrote, what you see is completely up to you. It's up to you. Also, see, in 1959, my teacher walked in the classroom and says, we're going to do a Shakespeare play today. Yes. It's Isi Kosa, who Julius Kakesar, or Balwengu William Shakespeare, who is Kukulelo, is Kosin, who W. Beam Ledley. Yeah. And he looks and says, simply means Julius Caesar, written by William Shakespeare, wow. translated into Isi Kosa by... W. Beam Ledley. Mm. So I love Shakespeare because I studied it. Mm. He is the greatest Shakespearean actor in the in this country. So he teaches me, in a way, in parentheses, I'll teach you about the Shakespeare. Yeah. In the process, he learns about humanity. Mm. Mm. So we learn from each other. So when the pain is there, we go to Shakespeare to take him mind off it. But when the pain is gone, I've given him his medication. Suddenly, South Africa issue comes in. Mm. Now we realize we're black and white. Mm. You people, your people. <laughs> you know, says, do you know my name? Yes. He said, yes. Says, Why do you always call me you people, your people? Why am I suddenly the spokesperson for all black people? Mm. I make a mistake. It's your people make a mistake. You make a mistake. It's you have made the mistake. Yes. You know, it is those kind of vignettes that ordinary conversation mm. that you realize that, my Lord, a simple question. You know, the lady who looks after my children, she's been with you 15 years. Mm. Why couldn't you say Doris? Correct. And I ask you, who is Doris? And you say, it's the lady that's look after my children. Mm. Why do you always have to say, the guy who looks after my garden? Yeah. Mm. None. Give him, for 15 years, you should know his name. Correct. Frankie mentioned a very important point in the fact that young people should go out and see this play because I think there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of things that our generations overlook. Yeah, I th I th and this is the thing about this play. I, I love this idea of these two old men mm. uh, t talking about their lives, yes. right? Uh, obviously, we see it on stage. Dr. Carney is incredible. Everyone's incredible on stage and the play is put together. But I love this idea. I love the idea of two old men talking, yeah. always. I think there's wisdom that gets shared when that happens. And I love the idea of, of us getting to see, because uh, this is Dr. Carney's uh, parts of his life that yeah. he's put on the screen. So this idea of seeing from a black perspective, mm. what are we overlooking and where are the triggers mm. and where are the feelings? And from a white perspective, mm. what are we not looking at? Where are the triggers? Where are the feelings? I think this is the most beautiful Kuneni and the King. Where everyone's got to go see a Joburg theater. What are some of the things that young South Africans don't realize that all the black South Africans went through before? I mean, you've lived both times. <laughs> I was 51 in 1994 when I voted. In fact, I was very angry. It looked too simple. Yeah. I thought voting was going to be <laughs> <laughs> you, thought, you thought we're going into battle. It's it's a like battle to vote. You just cross and you walk out, and that's it. And the country is free. No, I got to do much more than that. <laughs> no, it, it's basically our lives, you know. Things like we, we, we live side by side. Mm. But once the end of the day, I take a taxi to Soweto, you know, and, and, and Ryan is going north. Mm. And we, we meet again tomorrow. And there's that, twin, that 12 hours absence mm. from each other. And yet we're trying wow. to build a, na a nation. We're trying to build a rainbow nation, a non-racial nation. Mm. You know? But there's this hour that is very dangerous. That will result in a young boy, white, pee on a fellow student's clothes. Sure. You are in, in a in university. Mm. It's that 12 mm. hours that fascinates me that conversation when he Correct. gets home because yes. mm. that's where the whole problem is so we need to undergo a transformation of our homes yes, yes. we yes. should be absolutely aware that whatever we say in front of the children in front of friends that we're building this country to a beautiful country for mm. all of us Nine, four, seven.